Welcome to the future of the music industry. As always, I'm bringing you the latest news and commentary to keep you ahead of the game. I'm Death Beach, and today we're talking about blockchain, digital rights, and royalties. If this sounds interesting to you, please press like, hit subscribe, hit the bell. Let's make some noise in the comments, and let's share this with some people so we can help educate them on NFTs. Now you guys wanna give you a little disclaimer here, right? I'm a producer and mixer who is just really interested in this space and have taken the time to educate myself. If you need mixes, you need production, you wanna make some sick NFTs, you let me know. If you need consulting on NFTs and how they work, hit me up. But it's important for you guys to know as we get into today, I'm not a lawyer, okay? I understand basic copyright law, uh, and I understand the technologies that they're trying to put in place here. Are there some gray areas? Absolutely. That's what's making this space so fun right now. Now, we're just waiting for some centralization and uh, some regulation to move into the space to make it just really super safe. But right now is the time to learn about this stuff. So whenever it gets regulated, you're already ahead of everybody else. So now let's get into it. Challenge, huh? Yay. Streaming services require intermediaries to ensure fairness in the artist rights management process. Consequently, music creators need multiple contracts and multiple middlemen to protect copyrights and to distribute their music. Have you ever dealt with a music manager? I have been recently, and they're completely ridiculous people. Uh, anyway, blockchain can simplify digital rights management through smart contracts, enabling all proceeds to directly reach the music professionals involved with the content. The shared transparency provides a trustworthy ecosystem where the stakeholders receive their fair share of royalties. Hey, isn't this all the things that we've always talked about really wanting? These are the things that I've talked about with the NFTs, guys. It's all becoming a reality. It's important to note this has been around for a little while. Like this isn't necessarily new stuff. You know what I mean? Like I believe this has started in uh, like 2018. They've been developing the technology. The right kinds of things are falling into place. So uh, another challenge here, the lack of verified global registry of music creatives and their works and the mistrust of organizations who own relevant data make identifying music copyright and how royalties should be split between all parties a difficult task. It even makes it difficult to write into a very basic, simple sentence. Yeah! So, what does blockchain do for it? Well, <clears throat> excuse me, relevant information such as composition, lyrics, liner notes, cover art, licensing, can be encoded onto the blockchain, creating a permanent encrypted record into each participating device. Machines talk to each other and make this information accessible and transparent across the ecosystem. All right, let's check out another one here. So another challenge, fans have a multitude of tools at their fingertips for consuming and distributing music, while professionals only have a partial view of the way in which their music is shared and consumed. Oh, this sounds interesting. So with the help of other next generation technologies, the blockchain can ensure artists to intimately know their fans and address their music habits accordingly with targeted incentives and offers. So if you know that your fans share your music a lot, well, you run a contest to see who can share it the most and then you reward that person. I think that this is just super awesome and we've been talking about this stuff over here on this channel. If you've been here for a while, you know all about it. With so many ways to access music, piracy is a never ending struggle eating into the royalties and revenue for everyone involved in the music business. Oh my God. Well, combined with other technologies, the security that the blockchain provides can be leveraged to prevent unauthorized distribution or ripping of content. Bet. What? That's right. No piracy. How are they going to do it? Well, they have some sort of technology that's going to allow for it. Now, I know that this sounds really crazy, but we're going to go ahead and check something like this out. So, we have rare.tech digital ownership encryption. So basically they're marrying NFT technology with digital rights management. And that's what we see 
here in this little graphic. Now, we're going to read more about this. Uh, just want to show this graphic first. We have kind of the front end user interface that we're going to be talking about. The third party front ends is kind of like the actual thing that the, they're accessing through this front end. Uh, Rare is the place where there's uh, encrypted files. You can create the NFTs here. This is the, the platform and all your file storage is done on the IPFS, the interplanetary file system, or on any cloud provider. Now we're gonna get into this in more detail. The IPFS, interplanetary file system, basically is just a place decentralized to store all your files, okay? Nobody can ever get rid of these, nobody can ever take them down, anything like that. Now, just imagine the world we're moving into where everything's decentralized and people have decentralized websites. Well, they're gonna need a place to store all their files, otherwise somebody could totally shut them down. So you would use something like the IPFS uh, in order to do that. The big thing, NFT creation. Provenance. Now, to most effectively leverage public distributed ledger technologies, DLTs should be used as a ledger of account, but not for file storage. This means the access credentials and the user account information will be stored on the distributed ledger, while the files themselves will be stored in the IPFS. I think that this totally should make sense to you. If it doesn't, uh, basically the ledger just allows us to track these assets as they move around the blockchain, but it is not the assets themselves. Rare leverages the ERC-1155 standard to create unique non-fungible tokens for each asset that is uploaded to the Rare key management system. This allows users to seamlessly transfer assets on the blockchain, knowing they always have real ownership of their files that cannot be taken away from them and they can sell and resell just like physical goods. So, I mean, that's basically what we were just talking about. Okay, now this next one, uh, the encrypted viewer, this is really the thing tying it all together. So, a browser-based file viewer is needed where access credentials are inputted. Then encrypted content stored on IPFS is made viewable for fi common file types such as ebook, readers, audio, and video players. So, what this is basically saying okay, is if you have the NFT, it is the key to unlock whenever you go on a site, this content, and it accesses this content that is stored in the IPFS. So hopefully this kind of clears up how it will work. Now here's an article uh, just kind of going a little bit more into Rare. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Rare wants to use NFTs to manage digital rights. The company provides a blockchain-based digital rights management platform and middleware encryption to enable digital scarcity. It wants creators to be able to upload media such as video, books, music, source code, or art on the Rare platform stored inside a non-fungible token. Creators can license, own, and control the distribution of their content and make money on sales and royalties. Rare says that creators will keep 90% of the profits while the other 10% presumably goes to Nair and node owners. Now Nair is probably the native token. Uh, there's probably some sort of staking platform and the node is essentially where the distributed ledger is stored. So there are multiple nodes, the ledger is distributed to uh, amongst all of these nodes. Uh, now, I think it's kind of important uh, on the last page where we were talking about this stuff here, you know, so on Rare, the content is encrypted and to decrypt it, you must have the token. I just feel like I should clear that up a little bit. I feel like this kind of cleared that up, but uh, anyway, moving on. So the creators, songwriters, or artists, not all of us are blockchain savvy. So how do non-tech users who do not want to get involved with NFTs monetize their content? I was going to read this next paragraph, but it's weird. They're going to be a hosted marketplace where it'll just be very easy to go on in a couple of clicks you'll upload your file, it'll turn it into an NFT for you and you don't really have to worry about it. Uh, guys, this is very similar to Mintable, Rarible, OpenSea. I mean, uh, well, OpenSea, you can't create the token on there, but it is really easy to go to these sites and create the NFT. The, the thing that you really need the help with is what are you including with the NFT? Like what is making it special beyond it's just a song, right? 
this is the gap that needs to be bridged for a lot of people. Uh, so just something to think about, something you can talk to me about anytime. All right, so I just a couple more points here. So it also wants to bring video streaming into its offerings where the artist adds content to a rare node. Now, if a collector buys the piece, they can unlock the provenance footage proving the NFT is the original. Okay, this is fantastic. Uh, what they're saying here is, you know, if I buy this video, okay, I'm able to go and see the original footage wherever it's living in IPFS, okay? Verifiable on the blockchain. We can see that the original creator created it and put it into this particular storage. We can view all of this on the blockchain. Although it is currently prohibitively expensive to use Ethereum, there are plans to use faster blockchains such as Cardano, Talos, or Near later this year to scale the authentication layer for rare node service and inexpensively mint NFTs in bulk. I'm sure you guys know minting the NFTs on Ethereum is crazy expensive. You can mint the NFT essentially for free over on Mintable to get it on sale. Once it sells, you do owe the gas fee. So you guys, I hope that we got a little clearer on some blockchain and uh, digital rights management and how this stuff's gonna be tracked around the internet. Uh, of course, we'll be using Web3 is gonna be part of this, but hopefully just these sites, you know, IBM's working on it, Rare's working on it, everybody's working on it. We got it coming really soon. We're this early. I've brought you this this early. You guys found it this early. We are this early. We can design things to be really the way we want. However, we're thinking of it. We can create really awesome packages with the NFTs. So I'll be talking to you guys really soon. I have some ideas for videos coming.